Hi everyone, Mark from Guitar Nerds here with the second half of my top 10 weirdest Gibsons ever countdown. Before we head into this video, make sure you've watched part one where I count down numbers 10 through six. Done that, let's head straight in with number five. Number five. At number five, we actually have two guitars with a similar heritage. Throughout 2007 and 2008, Gibson ran promotions dubbed Guitar of the Week and Guitar of the Month. During these promotions, they would release a new model with a limited production run that would usually add a feature to an existing model, change a finish, or make another small alteration to a current guitar to set it apart from the regular production run. However, two models took this concept one step further. Arriving in September 2008, the Reverse Explorer took Gibson's most pointy shape and flipped it upside down. This new take on one of the most iconic rock guitars ever featured a mahogany body, a rosewood fretboard, and 57 classic humbuckers. Gibson also added the rather neat lightning bolt scratch plate, carbon fibre inlays and a rounded headstock equipped with Steinberger machine heads. Originally released in week 29 of 2007, the Reverse Flying V was easily the most memorable guitar of the Guitar of the Week promotion. To create this incredibly unique instrument, Gibson took a contemporary Flying V, flipped the body so that the neck joined the middle of the V and added a 1958 style split headstock. During its initial run, the reverse flying V was only available in natural, but was re-released due to public demand in the following year, with ebony and classic white models being added to the lineup. While the reverse flying V and reverse Explorer are completely bonkers, they show what Gibson's capable of when combining classic designs with a bit of original thinking. Number four on our list shows what happens when they throw out that rulebook entirely. Number four. By 1987, Gibson's classic designs were struggling to stay popular with the general public. Films like Robocop and The Running Man were pushing a minimalist, technology-centric aesthetic that was making the designs of the 50s and 60s feel outdated and stale. Step forward, the 2020 bass. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. Designed in collaboration with legendary active bass guru Ned Steinberger, the 2020 bass featured an uber-modern minimalist design, an ebony fretboard and two active humbucking pickups. As with other Steinberger designs, it also has a fold-out knee rest to stop it sliding around while you're playing sitting down. It's generally thought that less than 100 2020 bass models were produced, and they rarely appear online. However, if you're a Gibson collector or you like a bit of 80s retro styling, they are still an affordable model to pick up when they do appear at $400 to $500 on online auction sites. Number three. In 1957, Gibson was losing market share to Fender, whose Stratocaster was becoming the go-to electric guitar for professionals and wannabe professionals alike. To hit back at the Big F, Gibson president Ted McCarty began work on three new futuristic models that would change the Gibson product line forever. The guitar we now know as the Explorer began life as one of these prototypes, later dubbed the Futura, and featured a narrower top horn, a slimmer lower horn, and a split V headstock shape. Between four and six of these prototype models were produced, and as of 2014, only three are known to still be in existence. When Explorer production began in 1958, the body shape had been redesigned and the split headstock replaced with a six in line shape. However, in 1996, Gibson released the 1957 Futura reissue, despite the original model never having been released or being given that name. These reissues continue sporadically to this day, making sure that the original 57 design is not forgotten. Number two. Remember how I said Gibson were working on three new models in 1957? Well, one was the Futura, which later became the Explorer. One was the Flying V that we know and love. And the third is number two on this list. As with the Futura, the Gibson Modern wasn't actually called the Modern until much, much later. And it's debatable as to whether this futuristic body shape even made it to the prototype stage in 1957. However, what is known is that the design registered with the US Patent Office borrowed the base side wing of the Flying V and paired it with the Crescent Moon style lower bout. As with the Futura, the Modern did eventually make it into production when it debuted at the 1980 NAMM show as part of the Heritage series. In recent years, the Modern has returned to the Gibson catalogue, both as a faithful reissue and with a set of EMG pickups and a Floyd Rose trim as Zach Wilde's Modern of Doom signature. Before I reveal which guitar is weird enough to have made it to number one on this list, let's have a quick recap of numbers 10 through two. At number 10, the Rockabilly Ready N225. At number nine, the oh so 70s Marauder and S1. At number eight, the Super Stratty Victory MVX. At number seven, the Plastic Fantastic Sonex 180. At number six, is it a can opener? No, it's the Gibson Corvus. 
At number five, stick it in reverse, it's the Reverse Explorer and Flying V. Number four, part man, part machine, the Gibson 2020 base. Number three, the Futuristic Futura. Number two, the Art Deco-tastic Modern. Number one. So with a list like this, which guitar could possibly be the weirdest Gibson ever produced? Ladies and gentlemen, I present the Firebird X. Throughout the early 2000s, Gibson experimented with limited edition instruments such as the Les Paul Robot, the Dusk Tiger and the Darkfire, each which featured various combinations of self-tuning machine heads, digital outputs and piezo pickup systems. While met with cynicism from many in the guitar community, each of these models sold out and most improved on the features of the previous model. Released in 2011, the Firebird X sported a brand new offset body shape, robot tuners, three newly designed coil tappable mini humbuckers, a range of inbuilt effects and loads more, all powered by Gibson's own pure analog engine. As well as all of this, the Firebird X included not one, but two foot controllers, a G-Node interface and eight spare batteries. Also thrown in were recording and editing software that could be used in conjunction with the output from the hex pickup to process each of the six strings individually. All in all, the Firebird X was a lot of guitar for the money. Whether the weird body shape or the forward thinking features will render it a classic in the future remains to be seen. For now, it sits firmly atop my list of the top 10 weirdest Gibsons of all time. So there we have it, that's my list of the top 10 weirdest Gibsons ever produced. If you think I missed something or disagree with my choices, please let me know in the comments below. And if you like what you saw, remember to subscribe to Guitar Nerds. We'll be doing loads more top 5 and top 10 videos soon. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time.